the warmest of greetings to you. I am your storyteller, Chip. And you know, about 250 years ago, people in China believed that every year had the character of an animal. For example, if you were born in the year of the tiger, like Mr. Chen in this story, then you were supposed to be brave and a good leader and stubborn. Well, actually, nobody knew if Mr. Chen was brave or a good leader, because all he did was work as a carpenter. But he was certainly stubborn. If he made you a table and you went to sit on it, he would say, no bottoms on the table. Tables are for dinner. Do you want to eat your bottom? And that's not all Mr. Chen tried to keep off the table. Oh yes, Mr. Chen was stubborn all right. There was a time when his grandson came around for dinner and he came in and just sat on the table to take his shoes off. But when Mr. Chen saw him, his face went the color of a raspberry. His eyebrows got so pointy they could poke through an apple. And he said, no bottoms on the table. Tables are for dinner. Do you want to eat your bottom? Well, Mr. Chen's granddaughter, she burst into tears because he was so loud. But his grandson just said, sorry, granddad, and then went and took his shoes off by the door. Another time, though, Mr. Chen's grandson came in and took off his shoes and then just popped them on the table while he went to say hello to his granddad. But when Mr. Chen saw, his face went the color of beetroot and his eyebrows got so pointy they were like an ice cream cone. You could put three scoops of ice cream in. And he said, well, you know what he said already, don't you? No shoes on the table. Tables are meant for dinner. Do you want to eat your shoes? Well, Mr. Chen was so loud, his granddaughter and his next door neighbors were in floods of tears. But his grandson just said, sorry, granddad, and took his shoes off the table to pop them down by the front door. But then there was another time when Mr. Chen's grandson arrived and brought his dog around as well. And the dog jumped up on the table, really, really excited to see Mr. Chen. But Mr. Chen wasn't quite so excited. When he saw the dog there on the table, his face turned the color of a beef tomato and his eyebrows got so pointy it was like a, a valley you could fit a whole village in there and he said you know what he said no dogs on the table tables are meant for dinner do you want to eat your dog well this time he was so loud his granddaughter his neighbors and even your next door neighbors were in floods of tears but his grandson just said Sorry, Grandad. And he called his dog down from the table. <laughs> that was the last straw for Mr. Chen, though. He wanted to make sure that nothing ended up on that table that wasn't supposed to be there. And because he was a carpenter, it wasn't long before an idea popped into his head. He took his table and chairs into his workshop, where he had a whole bunch of carpentry tools. You probably know some of these. Have you, have you seen a saw before? And do you know the sound that a saw makes? It's kind of like this. Uh, and he had hammers. Do you know the sound that hammers make? Bang, bang, bang. And he had a planer. Do you know the sound that a planer makes? This is one of those long flat blades that you use to make things really, really smooth, like this. So Mr. Chen took his table and started making the legs extra long. First of all, by taking his saw to some wood, you can help with this if you like, and then banging him some nails, bang, bang, bang. 
then planing it to be really smooth. And by the time he'd finished, his table was four teachers tall. Then he took all four of his chairs and he began soaring. Can help with this if you want. Ooh, watch your thumb, by the way. I nearly caught mine. Then he got the hammer. Bang, bang, bang. And then he got the planer. And by the time he'd finished, all of his chairs were about three and a half teachers tall. Now, if chairs were that tall, you wouldn't be able to just jump on them with you. So Mr. Chen turned the side of every chair into a ladder. And of course, to do that, he needed to do some soaring and some hammering, bang, 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 and some planing. Next, Mr. Chen went into his lounge and he used his tools to take the roof off from that room. He left the roof on his bathroom and his bedroom because he didn't want people being able to look in there. But he took the roof off his lounge so that he could fit his new super tall table and chairs in the lounge. And the next time his granddaughter and grandson came around for dinner, even when the grandson brought his dog, Mr. Chen was able to say nothing would end up on the table that wasn't supposed to be there. And this meant that Mr. Chen was really happy for about two weeks. Then came the day when Mr. Chen had just climbed up to the top of his table and got ready to sit down to a nice meal of dumplings and rice and meat stew when into his lounge below came a tiger. Now, of course, if a tiger's coming through the door, I probably need to explain to you where Mr. Chen lived. Mr. Chen lived on the island of Taiwan in a little village called Sing Kang. And his village was on the other side of a river to a small jungle where this tiger came from. But the tiger had now smelt Mr. Chen's meat stew, which was easy to do because remember, Mr. Chen had taken the roof off his lounge and the tiger had followed that smell all the way to Mr. Chen's door and was now strolling into the lounge, looking up at the table. Well, the tiger didn't know how to climb a ladder, but it could jump and it started to jump up the side of those chairs. When Mr. Chen saw this, I'm sure you can guess what he's going to say. No, tigers on the table. Tables are meant for dinner. Do you want me to eat you? Of course, Mr. Chen knew that the tiger was more likely to eat him than him eat the tiger. And that's why Mr. Chen started throwing things at the tiger, throwing down his dumplings to bop it on the nose, throwing down his chopsticks to bop it on the head, even throwing down his meat to try and knock it down onto the floor. <laughs> well, it didn't really hurt the tiger much, but the tiger did quite like Mr. Chen throwing his meat to the floor. And after licking up those scraps of meat, the tiger didn't have any reason to stay in the room anymore and off it went back to the jungle. But Mr. Chen was very upset with having that tiger come round and he hoped that it wouldn't come round again. For the next couple of weeks, he decided not to have any meat in his stew. And this meant that he was at least able to dine happily for about two weeks. Then came the day when Mr. Chen had just climbed up the ladder to sit on one of his chairs to dig into his vegetable stew when there was a pitter, patter, pitter, patter, pitter, patter, pitter, patter, pitter, patter, pitter, 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 pitter,
and saw the rain coming down from thick grey clouds onto his dinner table. Well, he had taken the roof off, hadn't he? And I'm sure you know what Mr Chen is going to say. No rain on the table! Tables are meant for dinner! Do you want me to eat the rain? But of course, Mr Chen knew he couldn't eat the rain. So an idea popped into his head. And he climbed all the way back down to nip into his workshop and get some wood and some fabric and start doing some sawing, which he can help with. And some hammering. Bang, bang, bang. And some planing. Until he had made a huge umbrella, which he placed right in the middle of that giant table. And it was so big, it covered up all of the table and all of the seats as well, all of the chairs. It was a good job that Mr. Chen had put that umbrella up because the rain didn't stop falling. It kept on coming day after day. But Mr. Chen was able to enjoy his vegetable stew completely dry and very happy for about two weeks. Then came the day when Mr. Chen was just about to tuck into his vegetable stew, when in through the door down below came his granddaughter. She was absolutely soaking wet from all of the rain, and she had a look of terror on her face as she called up, Granddad, a tiger is trying to eat me! Mr. Chen looked down in disbelief, and sure enough, Behind his granddaughter, through the front door, slinked a tiger. Well, Mr. Chen's granddaughter wasted no time. She was climbing up the side of one of those ladders as quickly as she could. But when she got about halfway up, she just happened to look down to see how far she'd come. And the tiger leapt at her with a roar! roar! <laughs> Mr. Chen scrabbled across the table and reached down to Pull his granddaughter up onto the table. You can help him if you like. There we are. And then Mr. Chen looked at the tiger and said, well, you know what he's going to say. No tigers on the table. Tables are meant for dinner. Do you want us to... What? Mr. Chen was interrupted by his granddaughter tugging at his sleeve and saying, uh, Granddad, we are on the table. For the first time in his life, Mr. Chen didn't know what to say. But then he noticed that the tiger was leaving his house. So he turned to his granddaughter and said, quickly, sit on that chair over there. And he went back and sat in his own chair. And after he got comfy and was just about able to relax, through the door down below rushed his grandson. The grandson was carrying his dog and they were both soaking wet from all of the rain. But they both had looks of terror on their face. And the grandson called up, Granddad, there's a tiger trying to eat me! Mr. Chen and his granddaughter looked down in disbelief. And sure enough, behind the grandson and his dog slinked the tiger. Well, Mr. Chen's grandson was struggling to climb up one of those chairs with his dog over his shoulder, but he just happened to look down to see how far he'd come, and the tiger leapt at him with a roar. roar! Well, Mr. Chen and his granddaughter scrambled across the table to reach down and pull up the grandson and his dog. And you can help them if you like. And once they were all safely on the table, Mr. Chen looked at the tiger and you know what he's going to say. No tigers on the table. Tables are meant for dinner. Did you... What? This time it was the grandson interrupting Mr. Chen by tugging on his sleeve and saying, uh, Granddad, we are on the table. For only the second time in his life, Mr. Chen didn't know what to say. But then he noticed that a tiger was leaving his house. So he said to his grandchildren, quickly, sit on those chairs and 
Have your dog on your lap. <laughs> Mr. Chen went and sat back in his own chair and had just about got comfy when through the door down below came his next door neighbors, a dad, a mum, and their two children. And they were all looking really terrified and soaked to the bone in the rain. And they called up, Mr. Chen, a tiger is trying to eat us. Mr. Chen, his granddaughter, his grandson, and his grandson's dog all looked down in disbelief. As sure enough, a tiger slinked in through the door. All of Mr. Chen's neighbors were busy climbing up those chairs around the table. They just happened to look down to see how far they'd come when the tiger leapt up at them with a roar. roar! <laughs> Mr. Chen and both his grandchildren scrambled to the table to help the neighbors get up onto the table with them. You can help as well if you like. Yeah! And once they were all safely on the table, Mr. Chen looked down at the tiger and you know what he's going to say. No tigers on the table. Tables are meant for dinner. Do you want... <sighs> what? This time, Mr. Chen was interrupted by the two children from next door, tugging at his sleeves and saying, uh, Mr. Chen, we are on the table. Well, for the third time in his life, Mr. Chen didn't know what to say. But then he noticed that the tiger was leaving his house. So he said to everyone, quickly, sit on those chairs and all of you from next door, you can sit on that chair all together. Oh, well, once they'd just about managed to sit in their chairs, the next door neighbors a bit less comfortable than the grandson with his dog, who was a bit less comfortable than the granddaughter and Mr. Chen. The door opened. And in came seven farm workers from the nearby farm. They were all drenched in rain and they had looks of sheer fright on their faces as they called up, Mr. Chen, a tiger is trying to eat us. Mr. Chen and everyone else around the table looked down in shock. And sure enough, behind the farmers, through the door in slinked, a tiger. The farm workers were already halfway up the chairs, climbing up as quick as they could. But they just happened to look back to see how far they'd come. And the tiger leapt at them with a roar. roar! <laughs> well, everyone around the table scrambled onto the table to help the farm workers get up. And you can help with this if you like. And get them all up onto the table safely. And Mr. Chen looked down to say, well, you know he's going to say, no tigers on the table. Tables are meant for dinner. Do you want This time, Mr. Chen was interrupted by one of the farmers tugging at his sleeve and saying, uh, Mr. Chen, we are on the table. For the fourth time, fourth time in his life, Mr. Chen didn't know what to say. But then he saw the tiger leaving his house and he realized they didn't really have enough chairs for everybody now. So all he could think to say was, everybody sit on the edge of the table and, and keep your shoes off. Whatever you do, keep your shoes off the table. But after everyone had got comfortable around the table with their shoes dangling off the sides, in through the door downstairs came the entire village. Everybody in the village. There were the, the mayor, there were the doctor, there were other people from the houses, there were the soldiers on horses. They were all coming through the door absolutely drenched from all of the rain, all of them with looks on their faces of sheer terror. And they all cried, Mr. Chen, a tiger is trying to eat us. Well, everyone around the table looked down in disbelief as sure enough, 
behind the entire village, through the door, slinked a tiger. Well, by now, everyone in the village was scrambling to get up those chairs, and they just happened to look around to see how far they'd come when the tiger leapt at them with a roar. roar! Everyone around the table leaned down to help the entire village up onto the table and away from the tiger. You can certainly help with this if you can heave them up. And as soon as the whole village was there on the table, Mr. Chen looked down at the tiger and said, you know what he said? No tigers on the table. Tables are meant for dinner. Do you want what? This time it was the mayor interrupting Mr. Chen by tugging at his sleeve and saying, uh, Mr. Chen, we are on your table. For the fifth time in his life, Mr. Chen didn't know what to say. Even after the tiger had left, he realized there was no way he was going to stop shoes being on his table now. They couldn't all fit around the edge. But while he was still thinking about this, through the door down below came the tiger, absolutely soaking wet from all of the rain and looking really, really terrified. It was leaping up the sides of those chairs, desperately trying to get onto the table with the rest of the village. Well, when Mr. Chen saw it, he called down to the tiger, tigers on the table. This table is for this village. And when everybody else heard Mr. Chen say that, they all looked down at the tiger and they joined in and said, no tigers on the table. This table is for this village. And they all started to throw things at the tiger to try and stop it from getting up and eating them, throwing down the rest of the dumplings and the chopsticks and the bowls. But as they did, the tiger kept scrambling up. It, it didn't know how to use ladders, but it had got its paws around one of the chairs and was looking up at everybody on the table and looking down at the door with a look of real fright on its face. And everybody up on the table looked down and shouted, you know what they shouted? No tigers on the table. This table is for this village. Well, just then, through the door came a huge torrent of water. The rain had been falling now for so long, it had made the river so full of water that it had burst its banks. And water was rushing down the street, rushing in through Mr. Chen's door. And now it was starting to lap at the tiger's tail. The tiger was desperate now, trying to figure out and learn how to use a ladder and, and get a little bit higher. But Mr. Chen looked down and said, no tigers on the table. This table is for the, the, the what? Mr. Chen was interrupted this time by his granddaughter tugging at his sleeve with, with a look on her face that kind of said, And behind her, there was Mr. Chen's grandson, who said, Grandad, please help the tiger. Remember, if it wasn't for that tiger, all of us would have been carried away in the flood. That tiger has saved all of our lives. That tiger is part of this village. And for the sixth time in his life, Mr. Chen didn't really know what to say. But as he heard a frightened growl from the tiger and looked down to see the floodwaters getting higher and higher, an idea popped into his head. And he told everyone to grab hold of his legs as he went over the side of the table and wrapped his arms around the shoulders of the tiger. So you can help here, heaving so that Mr. Chen and the tiger can come back onto the table. <sighs> Once they were all safely on the table, eventually the rain did stop. 
and the waters settled, and the people lived quite happily up there on Mr. Chen's table, fishing from the water to get their food and feeding some of the fish to the tiger. The tiger was quite happy, by the way, getting stroked and petted by all of the village children. When the waters eventually went away, a lot of people climbed down from the table to find that their houses were damaged. So Mr. Chen taught the village children to use his tools. You remember the the saw? You can do this, can't you? And and the hammer, bang, 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 and the planer, and soon they were all able to work together to fix the damage that had been caused to every house in the village. And since this story, if you go to the village of Xingkeng, or indeed any village on the island of Taiwan, you will look at people's tables and you will find their dinner. You won't find any dogs. You won't find any shoes. You definitely won't find any bottoms. But you might notice a little statue of a tiger. That's there so that the people can remember the time that a tiger saved all of the lives of the village of Xingkeng from that great flood, with the help of Mr. Chen, of course. Now, if you go to Taiwan, you will find only tigers on the table. I really love that story. I love seeing how the tiger saves everybody in Xingkeng, but I also love seeing how Mr. Chen learns to be brave and a good leader. But you know, I'd love nothing more than knowing what you thought of that story. So please look below for where it says review and click the link and follow the steps to let me know your thoughts on this story. I really would love to hear from you. You can also find our epic challenge so that you can get creative with some of the ideas in this story and show me just how creative you are. Send me your stories and characters. And if you are an epic explorer, you'll also find a bonus story, another story from China. This time about an animal with floppy ears and a waggly tail and a tendency to go. <laughs> if you're not an epic explorer yet, go to fablespodcast.co.uk to find out how to become one. Right now, though, it only remains for me to say cheerio, and I hope to hear your story soon. So, cheerio, and I hope to hear your story soon.